Let's take a look at some important ideas from Unit 1, Lesson 4. In this lesson, we learned about what it takes to make a, a good definition. How much do we need to be precise? And what kind of things are not needed because they're kind of extra? Well, we decided that a translation, which we've been working on, it moves the points in a figure and it moves them the same distance. They all move the same distance and in the same direction. Okay. So they go, whether it's up five and right three or whatever direction it may be, uh, they're going to move in the same distance, same direction. Well, a rotation here, a rotation is going to move points so it moves the points in the figure again. And this time it's going to move uh, these points around concentric circles around, well, let's just say around a center point. So we got to have a center. And instead of going the same distance here, now we are going to go in the same direction. And direction will be clockwise or counterclockwise. So they all move the same direction around the center point. And that's by a, by a given angle. So we've got, to, we've got to know what angle that we're rotating at. Okay, so we've got to know the angle the direction, and we got to know where the center is at. Okay, uh, we got to know the distance and direction for a translation. And now for a reflection, we've learned that a reflection moves the points perpendicular to a line. A reflection, okay, moves the points perpendicular. That means ninety degrees. To or across, let's say, across a line so that the image and pre image are equidistant to the line. Okay? So the image and the pre image are equidistant. That means they're the same distance. So the key here when we have a reflection is we need uh, to know that line of reflection and that it travels perpendicular and equidistant. Those are kind of the key phrases there. All right. So there's some examples of some precise definitions that have the key features. All right. Now, um, some vocabulary that we've been using, just uh, make sure we're all on the same page here. We've talked about angles. Angles are rays that share an endpoint. And so here's an example of an angle. Rays go on forever in one direction. We can name an angle by its vertex. Okay, so this is the vertex here. And so we can call this angle A. Or if we have some other points on it, like B and C, we could call this angle BAC. Or if we wanted, we could call it angle CAB. We name it the way we would draw it. So if we start at B, went to A, and then went to C, we would trace the angle. Or if we start at C, went to A, and then B, that would trace the angle. All right? Uh, angle of rotation we kind of talked about. That's uh, um, if we have a fixed point that we're rotating around, the, the angle of rotation is the angle that it that the rotation moves. So if we have a point here and we have some object out here, let's call this A. And if we rotate this a certain distance around the point, we'll get A prime. Okay. And that's our angle of rotation right there. Okay. Well, a circle. A circle is all the points that are equidistant. Equidistant means the same distance. Let's see if I can get a decent circle here. There we go. So here's all the points that are equidistant 
from a center point, okay? So, and we, the way we name a circle is we name it by its center point. So if the center point is called K, then we would call this circle K. Now we could start some convenience stores too, right? Huh? <laughs> All right, so we name it by this circle. There we have it. All right, so a degree, degree is how we measure how much we rotate it. It's 1 360th of a complete circle. Okay, and perpendicular bisector, here's an important one. So when we do reflections, we're we'll running into these perpendicular bisectors. A perpendicular bisector takes a line segment and uh, we find the midpoint. The midpoint is the point in the middle. And so we cut that line in half. Okay, that's, uh, and that, that's what makes this a bisector. Cuts it into two parts. And then if we draw a perpendicular line, then this is the perpendicular bisector. Okay? So, and that's what happens when we reflect one point to another, right? All right, so uh, we're going to talk about preserving distance and angle measures. That's what happens when we do these rigid transformations. Uh, the shape doesn't change. The, the lengths and the angle measures are the same. So just to have a couple examples here, let's, let's think about these definitions here. So we want to analyze the samples of student definitions provided and determine what revision should be made to make the student's definition more accurate and complete. All right. So we got a reflection is a transformation of the plane that moves all the points from the pre-image across a line of reflection to create an image that is congruent to the pre-image, right? Well, what do you think? What do we have? We have it's uh, a transformation. It's in a plane, that's useful. Okay, so it's on a flat surface. It moves the points, that's important. And the biggie is that it moves across a line of reflection. Okay, uh, and to create an image that is congruent to the pre-image. This fact is kind of a result. So that's not really needed in the definition. That is true. But that's a result of what happens with the reflection. Okay, so this is really not needed. That last part there. Okay, including that. All right. So all of this stuff that I'll highlight right there in red. All right. So that can really be cut, all right? And if we did that, then, uh, you know, we'd have a simple, more precise definition, okay? All right, how about this? A rotation is where all the points of a figure turn as they move to create an image. Well, all right, we got the basic idea there, but the word turn is a little vague there, okay? And as they move, well, how do they move? Okay, so we need to know that uh, they, they move around a point. Okay, so let's add to this. So maybe we could say they, the points move around a center point. Okay, or just a point, I guess. So that needs to be in there, okay? And it, we also need to know that we rotate it by a uh, fixed degree or fixed angle measure. So it doesn't say anything in there about uh, an angle measure, and that's kind of important, all right? So how we turn, turn is not quite specific enough, all right? So we're moving. Uh, in the plane or around a center point by a fixed angle measurement. Here we have a translation is a transformation that slides points the same directions and distance. Now that's pretty good. The word slides is a little vague, so we might uh, be better off saying something like what we said. It moves points in a plane 
the same di direction and distance. So slides, it's a little, little vague, all right? So but we'll leave that. All right. And one last thing here, retrieval. So as we're talking about definition, here's some descriptions. And so the question is, uh, what are these objects that we're talking about here? We've got a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. Well, let's see. Here's one, two, three, four. We can mark those congruent like this. That looks like congruence. Is that the only kind of shape that looks like a square? Well, we can also do a shape that looks like this. All right. That also has congruent sides. Well, what is the, the name that describes both of these? These are what we call rhombuses. But wait a minute, I thought it was a square. Well, a square is a special rhombus, all right? Uh, so the name of the family that both of these belong to is the rhombus family, okay? What about this, a quadrilateral with four congruent uh, angles, four congruent angles. Okay, what, uh, what about this one? That looks like it has a four congruent angles. Looks like we got four 90 degree angles, right? How about this one? A square again. Does it have four congruent angles? Yep. Well, what family do both of these belong to? Well, they both belong to the rectangle family. Okay. Well, wait a minute. I thought this was a square, all right? And yes, it is. Here we have sides that are definitely different. Uh, but a square is just a special rectangle. It can belong to the uh, rectangle family and still be a square. So a square belongs to both of those families. And one more, how about a quadrilateral with opposite sides that are parallel? Well, we could use some of the shapes that we've already had there. So we have, uh, we've got our rectangle. That has parallel sides. Let's see if I can draw a better rectangle. There we go. Okay, opposite sides are parallel there. How about the square? Are opposite sides parallel there? Sure. Well, how about this one here? Are opposite sides parallel? Well, they're supposed to be. And this is the symbol. This is how we show parallel sides. We put these little arrows on them. Okay, yeah, so what is the most general term here? Well, if all we know is opposite sides are parallel there, then this is a parallelogram. Okay, so all of these shapes, yes, a rectangle, yes, a square, and a more generic parallelogram, they're all parallelograms, okay? So uh, rectangles are special parallelograms. Rhombus are special parallelograms. It's kind of like uh, people who uh, were born and live in Oregon are Oregonians. They are special Americans. Yes, they're Americans, but they're more specific. In the same way, yes, a rectangle can be a parallelogram. It's a special parallelogram. And a square can be a rectangle. It's just a special rectangle. All right. All right, great. Well, there you have it. There's some good thoughts on what it means to be a good definition. We want to be precise. We want to be specific. And we want to avoid extra stuff that's not necessary. That's what makes a good definition. Thanks a lot.